from a breakout star favoured by many in the community, and a cult-like audience built around him, the maze has fallen into a never-ending spiral of hopelessness that has now ended with him deleting his YouTube channel. But the full story of how Maze is completely gone is yet to be told. I mean, a few months ago, this man was standing on a hill saying that he wouldn't succumb to the haters telling him to delete his online social presence, and yet here we are now. Of course, we all have a decent understanding of what has happened. The Lil Nas X mods, the seizure controversy, NFTs, the Chonk channels, and the allegations against the Maze. But what's been happening from January to now is a lot more. Awful responses, accusing others with little to no evidence, more NSFW antics, and some disgusting behaviour with more minors. Oh, those promises to become a better person and never make a mistake. If only we knew how bad things really were. It's time we finally retell the fast decline and the self-destruction of the maze, and explain some of the horrible stuff he's done since. But uh, before we do, here's a brief word from our sponsor. In a day and age where we are dependent on technology, it's important to make sure your online data is as secure as possible from hackers, scammers, and much more. So don't miss out on this chance to keep yourself secure with Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network that essentially keeps the data you send to others completely secure, thanks to the military-grade encryption that it puts in your data, so uh, no one can look in and see what you're doing or where you are. But that's not all it can do. Surfstrike allows you to switch countries in order to bypass region lock content, from better Amazon deals to different Netflix shows dependent on which countries. Surfstrike protects you anywhere and everywhere, from keeping you safe whilst you're on public Wi-Fi, to security add-ons, a safe search engine, and there's over 3,200 servers in 95 countries, so you won't have to worry about your connection dropping off either. All of this and more can be accessed by clicking the link in the description, and by using promo code TOASTIFY, you can get 83% off, plus three extra months for free. And along with the fact that only one subscription will apply Surfstrike to multiple devices, that just shows you that this is one hell of a deal that's only here for a limited time. So if you want your online data from privacy to be as secure as possible, whilst at a very low price, this might be your only chance. Again, that's the link in the description. Code Toastify for 83% off and three additional months. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring me, and without further ado, onto the video. When my video was uploaded and first came to May's attention, his first response was interesting. He initially seemed to be very nice towards the video because it made him realize the error of his ways. Although retroactively, this is probably some sort of ruse, especially when you looked at his Discord server, which told a completely different story. There was damage control there, even when the allegation document was first posted. The mods were working overtime, removing anyone who dared post a link to the document in the server, even when it wasn't the correct channel. And only a few days later, Maze dropped a full document trying to disprove the accusations. Now, I had a lot of people sending me this document saying he'd taken responsibility and whatnot, but upon further inspection, this document is a mess. Let's have a closer look. In this paragraph where he addresses the Chunk channels and the servers, he just straight up admits that he could have done a better job making an NSFW channel secure on a server full of miners. However, it's written really sneakily, making Maze look favourable and downplaying a pretty bad situation. And one of the more creative issues was when he explained his comment about the FNF fandom being more kink friendly. He defended himself by saying what he actually meant was that uh, he didn't want people to be harassed for their preferences, and inspecting the full screenshot uncovers two possible moments. Motives. On one hand, you can see it, he's talking about how people such as Atsuova were shamed out of their kink, but at the same time, he's also talking about the Chonk server, implying that was somehow his way to make the fandom kink friendly, since it's too sudden of a topic change to not be related. Listen, I could think of about 10 better and more effective ways of bringing awareness about harassment towards those with weird kinks. Maybe make a community post or a video about it bringing up good points. Instead, making NSFW channels dedicated to fat kinks on a server filled with minors is not one of those methods. It's an oddly specific one, actually, that Maze has used. In this short paragraph, he just kind of assumes that all victims of grooming just act the same. And as you all know, when I confronted her, she just shrugged and left the group chat. I think if I really did what she said I did, she would have said something like, that's what you get for grooming me, or at least, you deserved it. And I think this is probably the worst part of the document. Maze is using a pretty harmful mindset, trying to predict someone's mental state, 
after they've just been through a pretty big event in their life. Victims of grooming don't all react the same. They can respond with anger, attachment, anxiety, denial, depression, and in my experience, isolation. There are definitely patterns in behaviour when something specific happens, but the reaction of a victim is entirely dependent on who they are as a person and how much they are exploited. And Mace's comments here just show a complete lack of understanding of what he may have done and how victims react. In the next paragraph, he just continues to try and defend himself on the really happy shaking controversy, despite the situation being pretty much a lost cause. He does this by trying to justify his post and putting emphasis on the fact that he had no intentions to trigger anything. However, this is a blatant misunderstanding of the criticism. It wasn't saying you had malicious intent and want to give people seizures, it was about your irresponsibility when creating content. Also, I like this part of this so-called accountability document where he acknowledges the hospital rumour, says he feels awful and then just moves on without any like development, like what? This is like one of the biggest points against you, that you were, might have been responsible for someone being hospitalised and you're just like, yeah, I feel bad about it, moving on. <laughs> At this point, reading through the document, I'm getting almost bored of it. The Lil Nas X stuff is just him saying he lost his mind, the NFTs one is just him saying he's dumb and his comfort show is Family Guy. This all goes on for a while, Maze goes out of his way to absolutely address everything, and I mean, we don't have all day. So those are just some of the gripes I have with this document. But with this response over, what happened next? Well, some people decided it'd be a good idea to make an FNF mod about Maze's drama, and in one paragraph, he sounds more angry than he ever did in any response to the allegations of grooming at everyone. So I've been notified that people are making a mod about my drama. I gotta say, I am mortified. I've never been more disgusted with this fandom or any fandom in a really long time. If you know the people who are making this mod, please call them out on this crap. I know I've done a lot of awful shit, but this is too far. It's funny how here Maze is like way more angry at like what's probably a disrespectful troll than at allegations he believes to be false about him being like a groomer and a pedophile. You know, it almost could be indicative of the truth of these allegations that he's less pissed off about them than this, but we'll not go there. And anyway Maze, you can't really be too mad considering you didn't help yourself with what you did after. For example, Maze then roleplayed with another 15 year old. I'm just gonna put it on screen right now, I'm not bringing myself to even read any of this. The days of reading roleplay DMs are far beyond me now, but you can clearly see this here, this interaction is evidently sexual. Also, notice the date, the 2nd of February 2022, almost a month after my video, and he just goes against the promises that this video caused him to make. And this is why I never believed and will never believe Maze's apologies because it's clear they aren't truly what he thinks. On paper, according to his words, he is sorry, but from everything he does, it's clear that he really isn't, and is instead just doing it because it will get the heat off his back and his fans will praise him some more for being oh so brave and whatever. To use an old quote, a man is defined by his actions, not his words. This isn't the first incident, and most certainly won't be the last covered in this video. And here's a last minute edition I just had to put in, here's Maze talking to a 14 year old, he's 18 obviously, uh, this happened this March and he's just talking to them about pornography, teaching them about it, and yeah, this guy is a complete groomer, like, there's no like, deniability, this guy is fucking disgusting. Anyway, back to the video, just really needed to stress this because it's uh, quite important. So at this time, despite his apology, the FNF community was largely split on Maze, and his credibility had taken a beating. So in order to clear his name, he did the classic move of leaving the fandom on the internet and then rejoining a few days later. You guys remember the last time Maze announced he was quitting after a controversial event and then got revealed that he was weaponizing his audience against critics of his channel? Yeah. But hey, don't worry Maze, just keep on going and promoting NSFW commissions to a server full of miners. Yo, what's up guys, Dagamonix here, and I just want to address something real quick. He was a good man. And today I'll be debunking all the claims that the maze is actually a groomer. I've accepted the fact that I'm basically the punching bag of the FNF community. Now then, come on man, don't think that way. You're, you're a great YouTuber, and he made the Sunday Night S-Word mod. Even though he actually made a video debunking all of those claims, my friend still thinks that he's a groomer to this day. If you guys watching, have a good day too. Subscribe to the base since he's awesome. And as always, peace out, y'all.
So you may think the maze is a bad person from Captain Jack's video but this is wrong. Around the 15th of February 2022, The Maze, along with another person known as Zedak, released a document exposing Blue Bell VA, who you probably know from being an associate of Maze and also being drawn like this on uh, Maze's community tab. The document is short, but split into two halves, with Zedak taking the first half and Maze writing the second. Let's have a look at them both. Starting with Zedak, their half is mostly exposing Blue Bell for aging up underage characters and drawing them in an NSFW way. Now I'm not going to sit here and defend Bluebell for what they've done because that would be really blatant favouritism, especially since I'm a lot more educated in what's happened compared to my initial stream. But what I will defend them on is this really weak claim of gaslighting. Here, Zedak basically makes their claim and then admits they have no evidence, and asks readers who are in Blue's Discord server to go find it, without any reference of time, date, or even topic. The fact that this Zedek individual can be bothered to like maybe make an ult to gather these screenshots, or like even provide a reference to like what the topic's about and where the gaslighting's happening, that's really telling honestly. If you've been told that Blue has been gaslighting people, but you don't have any reference of what it was about, maybe don't throw those kind of claims in a document. Other than that, Zedek's half is mostly fine and solid. Now, Maze's half, that's an entirely different story. Maze's side of the document is nothing more than an anecdote about how someone once posted NSFW images of an underage character in Blue's server, and after good guy Maze confronted Blue on this, they brushed it off and disregarded it. Now, this isn't entirely out of the realm of possibility considering that they drew similar stuff, but no evidence is provided to back up Maze's claims. No recordings, screenshots of any DMs, nothing. And despite that, when I dared to call claims and no evidence weak, the maze actually started trash talking my response to his Bluebell document in other DMs. Keep in mind at this time he had ample opportunity to DM me because we'd already have a conversation before. And ironically enough, Toastify saw these claims I made against Blue and said they were weak. Yes, they are weak. You had nothing to back up your claims. You don't specify how you originally talked to Blue, and considering how you mentioned straight after that you were dragged into a call, it's reasonable to assume it was over DMs. Where is your proof? Even when it came to flimsy claims such as the 15 year old on the original document, there were at least DMs of other people talking about the event happening. Here, there is nothing at all, and to act surprised when someone calls a claim back to my no screenshots weak, it's just idiotic. Now, the question on my lips is why would Maze be joining in or commanding this expose? To anyone with a functioning brain, it doesn't make sense to release an expose in someone else after you've been recently exposed, because you're in no position to do so. But I can see through you, Maze. A lot of people, including Maze, seem to think that in order to redeem themselves, they have to immediately expose former friends for similar things, in order to prove that they're not actually into kids and they're opposed to these actions. But this is a classic rookie mistake. More receptive members of the audience will realise these exposés aren't actually about morality. It just proves that behind the scenes, you were perfectly fine with keeping this behaviour private when you were friends. But uh, now, your career's on the line, so you just decide to drop new stuff to throw someone else under the bus as a distraction. And how do I know it's nothing more than a mere distraction? Well, here's the thing. If Maze released information about someone who was involved in drama with him, that would at least make sense. You're getting back at someone. But Blue never even did anything remotely huge to Maze. In fact, if anything, they supported Maze whilst people were attacking him for drawing Blue in an NSFW way. So this is just throwing them under the bus in order to distract from your own situation. And if you will throw Blue under the bus, at least don't try and disguise it. You may say that they shouldn't be cancelled for this and you really don't want harassment to happen to them, yet your final message in your statement directly instructs people to tell them it's not okay to do what they did. Around late April to early May, a user on Instagram uploaded a detailed 22 minute video talking about their experience with Maze whilst he was dating them. He was 17, they were 14. The entire Instagram video, which you're about to see heavily cut down, showed Maze being a predator, a huge manipulator, and as well as that, Maze had emailed the user's mother and asked the user's 10 year old cousin to inflate themselves in roleplay. Yeah, you heard that right, a 10 year old. I was in a toxic relationship with a semi-popular TikToker and famous video game modder. You've insulted my family, manipulating me into feeling like the bad guy, but 
The main manipulation tactic that hurts me till this day is making me think I wanted to do the things that you wanted me to do with you that I never thought of doing in my life. Now, I've always felt uncomfortable even mentioning my kinks and fetishes to anybody, but because he was so honest with me, I felt like I should roll with him, you know? When the role plays commenced, we rarely did anything I wanted to do. And when we did, he had to shove something fat in there. I didn't even enjoy role playing, to be honest. I just did them to have somebody to talk to. It was quarantine after all. I wasn't completely on roll with doing any of my own kinky ideas with him because I was 14 and still trying to understand who I am and these crazy fantasies, and let alone just embarrassed that he even knew. The things he did to me in the role plays were so gross that I feel like I can't go into detail about them. I, I wanted somebody to talk to and stay with me because I've lost so many people in my life who I thought cared about me and I thought this guy cared about me so I didn't want to lose him so I gave him the pleasure that he asked for. One day I got on my 10 year old cousin's phone and began texting William to see if he would be loyal to me and see if, you know, He's creepy, like creepier than how he's been acting towards me. We had been talking about EDP and that kind of got me paranoid, so yeah, I hate pedophiles with fucking passion. To be rid of suspicion, I simultaneously chatted and roleplayed with him on this account, and to my surprise, he was trying to convince my practically baby cousin to quote, gain for him, end quote. That day, in February 2021, is when the emotional abuse of him after I confronted him about it, he tried telling me, I thought she was 14 like you. By the way, at this time, he was 17. And I had told him before that Savannah was 10 and my other cousin was 14. But I worded things in a less mature and dumb way to make it seem as if he's practically talking to an infant. So I knew what he was saying to me was complete, utter bullshit just to protect his ass and protect me from leaving him so that he could not roleplay with me anymore. Two times he even told me to fuck off. And by then, I began rolling a pussy and a backbone and I tell him all the things I thought about him. And we still continue talking like besties after that. Finally, May 30th, 2021, we had our final argument about a friend who he thought I was in love with. And I blocked him for good. But... I forgot he had my email address. During the summer, every now and then, he'd email me to apologize to me, but I was 100% done, and I made that clear to him. But suddenly, I get a random notification from my emails again, and I almost thought it was them, and I was about to go through with my plan of calling the Popo, but it was from somebody named Kathy. So I open it, and here's what it says. Hello, this is Will's mother. I'd like to talk to you before you call the police. He has brought this situation to my attention, and I am not amused at the slightest. He is going to be gone for a very long time. Could I see these screenshots of those real please? William, you wouldn't tell your witch mom about me sending you to jail. This is obviously you. Now, a quick message for William G. Before I get back on script. I genuinely, I genuinely do miss our good conversations. I really do miss those role plays. Just those fun role plays that didn't get turned sexual and fat and just kinky. You, I don't miss the perverted William. I don't, I hate that William. I want you in fucking prison. I want you in hell. I want you to, I want justice for all those other little children who who you're trying to make yourself look innocent over. That is horrible. That is hor That is so self-centered. That is pitiful, pathetic. But I don't miss the times when I realized that all of that was bullshit, utter bullshit. All of that was fake. Oh, you just wanted me for my body, just to fantasize over me. And for that, I, I say, go to hell. I hate you, I hate you. I. This, none of these videos are going to get the attention that they deserve, but I'm going to feel pretty, pretty damn proud of myself for finally speaking up over this. And so does your mom and dad and your fucking step-parents. They deserve a better son.
and all your friends and all your followers, they all deserve a better person to look up to. You're sick. You're sick. You are sick. I hate you. You're a coward. And I pray, I pray that you become a better person. A better person for your family and a better person for your followers. A better person for your friends. A better person for society. I can't stand you. I think about you every day and how you, how you affected me. Now that is a very descriptive video with a lot of evidence, pretty undeniable. But let's see how the maze reacted to that video. One of the main predictions of this video was that following the publishing, Maze would rebrand. Like I've said before, no sooner did I upload that video, he changed his username. He'll do it again after this video. And that he did, as on the 2nd of May, he renamed his channel, Sonar and Everything, to Starlight. It's likely that this was a plan he had for later, but decided to rush it out now in order to not be tied with the Maze name as much as possible, especially with the Instagram video's release. However, this isn't all. To look at Maze's further reaction, we have to look to his community post and the pathetic excuse he gave for his change and the video. Hello guys. I plan to rebrand myself soon. One of my old associates, not Cole, who had a big influence on the advertisement of this account, name, persona, has been caught doing some sketchy shit in my name. I've cut him out of my name completely and I'm changing my name, Sona, everything. With that being said, meet star underscore light. On Discord, the maze wrote saying, he's a friend of mine. That's another reason as to why I change accounts. I was using his email. Another user replied saying, why were you using his email? Bro's friends with himself. The maze replies to this by saying, I used to not be allowed to have social media, and they kept track of my email, so I used someone else's email. A user responds to this by saying, so then you doxed your friend, and another one responds by saying, bro, you're like 14 or 15. Maze responds to the doxing thing by saying, no, I didn't. Maze continues by saying, I'll have him delete his account, and a user responds saying, why would you cut ties when you did nothing wrong anyways? Maze responds to this by saying, what? He's the one who messed with this girl with my account. I'm not William. Wow, Maze, I'm I'm pretty shocked. I can't believe you respond to the Instagram post by going down the my little brother was on my account excuse. How childish, but how insanely predictable as well. So what you're telling me, Maze, is that someone else called William, who types the same way as you, would sexually DM a 14-year-old whilst you were 17, ask a 10-year-old to inflate themselves, sent many emails throughout the summer to the 14-year-old and their mother, get your own mother to respond, and hack to your Discord? What do you think we are, Maze? Fucking idiots. If anything, this is just further proof to add the supposed validity of these allegations. He did exactly what was predicted of him, and he danced his way into making a batshit story about someone who's apparently so close to the channel. It's also the fact that if this was true, then how this person got away with doing this for so long is generally near impossible. And if someone did want to do bad stuff in his name, why didn't they just like post the n-word on his community post? Oh, no, instead, they specifically talked to an email a minor, something Maze has been accused of doing, multiple times before. This story is so fake that it's almost hilarious, but yeah, no, I'm confident Maze did actually do this. This is a fucking awful cover story, and this guy is absolutely sick. And you know what the worst thing is? People actually did somehow believe that cover story. There is a good reason I kept quiet on my community tab because I had a strong suspicion that Maze wasn't rebranding to Starlight because of an artistic epiphany. And now it's turned out that I am indeed correct. So hang your heads in shame because none of you dumb fucks stood and thought to ask a simple question of what exactly did that person do and how did they do it. Also around this time, pictures of Maze's face, belly and penis had all leaked, and were now circulating around the inner threads of the FNF community. And yes, I have unwillingly seen all those pictures. But what would make him finally snap? You'd think it would be him coming to his senses about his actions and imposing a self-exile, but you're expecting too much self-respect from someone who like that. Instead, it was just one little viral tweet. 
On May 14th, 2022, now suspended account Cubic Spinder posted a tweet mocking the maze's thumbnail responding to the allegations, saying, This shit still has me crying, what the fuck is that thumbnail, Lamau? The tweet went on to gain over 60,000 likes on Twitter, and this really was the massive straw that broke the camel's back. Maze, at this point, knew his gig was up, so he posted on his channel for the last time on the 15th. I've thought about this for a while, and I've made my choice. I'm deleting this channel and leaving FNF. For good this time. It's clear that someone like me isn't fit to be a social media celebrity. And now it's gotten to the point where my family thinks I'm a liability. You can still catch me on Discord, but I'm deleting my server. I used to love this community, but now I get scared every time I post something. I'm probably just going to be a fetish artist or something. Thank you for sticking with me for so long. This YouTube channel will be deleted in 12 hours. However, even to the bitter end, he still wore a public facade, saying in private DMs, Whatever. Shippy, you're director or whatever. I want nothing to do with this shitty mod anymore. And the final ending post read, Goodbye, this channel's been deleted now. Screenshot as is the last post ever on this channel. Good fucking riddance. Many people have commented on Maze by calling him the Chris Chan of the FNF community, and it's kinda hard to disagree with that, not in a literal sense, but in terms of behaviour, I don't think anyone in the FNF community is quite like him. He's erratic, reactionary, and socially inept at times, and I think some of those characteristics can be attributed to things such as his autism. But what he can't blame his autism on is stuff such as lying, blackmailing, manipulation, and grooming. When I initially made my first maze video, I ended it off by asking the question, how many second chances can one man have? And the answers were pretty split between those who believed he had run out, and those who forgave every mistake all the way to the end. And to those diehard Maze fans who made it to the end, I hope you uh, at least realise that individuals shouldn't be idolised because they make content that you enjoy. As shown here, people hate him for a very good reason, and I hope that within some time, that finally comes to you. I will end off by saying this. It takes some talent to create a career as successful as the Maze, but he only has himself to blame for its downfall. Until next time, stay toasty. Before I go, happy Black History Month, everyone.